All right, welcome to the guide on cylinder air mass. That's what we're going to go over today. Uh, warning up front, there's a lot of math coming up and a lot of physics, but very good to know uh, when uh, you're tuning an engine. All right, so a quick overview of what we're going to be dealing with today. Um, we're going to go through the ideal gas law. We have to understand this. Chemistry 101. Um, and you can read the rest. Uh, this is what we're going to go through. And the examples at the end, we're going to take a look at the scanner and some, some real-life examples and how these uh, formulas actually work. And we, uh, we will go over the formulas and, and, and all that, so be prepared for a little bit of math. It's not terribly difficult. Hopefully, I can lay it out for you in an understandable manner. And, uh, of course, uh, we'll go through the um, all the rest here. All right, so what is the ideal gas law? Well, this is actually one of the most useful formulas that we're in, in chemistry. So it's very, very easy and intuitive to figure out. Um, it's, it's very simple. So if I multiply pressure times volume, that's going to equal the amount of moles times the constant uh, times the temperature. These two sides have to equal each other. And in our case, it's even easier because our volume does not change. This will not change, so that will remain a constant. Um, and R will remain a constant. So there's only three things that can affect each other, pressure, moles, and temperature. So moles is actually something we don't know. In order to get that, um, we just, uh, we're just we going to multiply these two things by, um, and divide RT off that. It'll give us moles. Very simple. Um, and at the bottom, you see the breakdowns for everything and what it all all means. So 8.3145 in this case is what we're always going to use. And then, of course, uh, temperature is going to be in Kelvin. Um, so Celsius just plus, all it is is Celsius plus 273.15, or just 273. And you'll get Kelvin. Uh, very simple, easy, um, and, to, and don't get intimidated when you hear molecular. It's just a number. Um, and we will figure this out. And I'll then uh, show what we're going to do with that number. Um, and that's how we're going to actually do these calculations and uh, the formulas are not difficult. All right, so in reality, gases are anything but ideal. However, this uh, formula is going to work just fine for us. In this case, um, one thing uh, one thing to note off of here is that no notice it says every dry air mole has a uh, molecular mass of 28.97. So what that that implies is that uh, humidity will change uh, the actual mass of the of the mole. Um, so what we're looking to do is uh, once we figure out the moles from the, the, the letter N in the formula, uh, we multiply by this and we get a, we get a, a mass of, uh, of that number. So um, this is something that's going to come up later in the formulas and uh, we'll go over that here in a minute. On the bottom, I uh, talk about the, uh, the uh, mass is still the amount of matter. However, on Earth, uh, one gram of mass is also one gram of weight. So uh, this you can think of as weight or, uh, or mass, either one. Um, it'll work fine on, on Earth, just won't work on the moon. Okay, just a couple things to point out real quick is that in, intake manifold is actually not a sealed space. Um, so it's going to draw in air from outside um, based on atmospheric pressure So and the difference between those two. Um, we measure that with the manifold absolute pressure sensor, which is the map. Um, and the difference between atmospheric and the map is uh, often referred to as vacuum, um, aka a pressure differential. So if I have 50 kPa map in a 100 um, atmospheric, that's 50 kPa of vacuum. Uh, it's actually pulling in the difference. Uh, so that's pretty simple to figure out. Uh, and uh, of course, um, something else to note here is when uh, the pressure will actually remain fairly constant uh, throughout the log. Um, if you log this, you'll actually see the pressure doesn't change a significant amount um, with heat. So what that means to us is that uh, increased temperature can only mean a decrease in moles according to the ideal gas law. We should see this, and it's actually easy to log, and, and you can actually see this, and we'll show this later in a um, in the, in the scanner. Uh, so that's just reduced density and as you see the best example would be a cold engine maintaining an AFR and a hotter engine eating uh, well less because there's less uh, grams per cylinder. So it's, it's pretty simple, uh, very simple uh, concept here. Okay so first we're going to talk about the MAF real quick. Uh, so you have the MAF, mass airflow sensor, uh, the MAF. Um, it's the operation how it works is actually going to uh, kind of reveal to us um, exactly what's going on with the air mass and why this is very accurate. Um, so it uses a heated element to determine the actual air mass coming in the engine. So if you think about this, denser air will draw more heat and require more voltage. So that also means that hot air draws less heat and will require less voltage, just basically accounting for the heat factor pretty pretty easily. Now the only, um, the only real downflow of it is the backflow or turbulent air. So when you have uh, transitions, like you let up on the throttle real quick, you're going to have some backflow that's going to flow back over and get reaccounted for, basically, um, and uh, lower RPM. So you also have turbulence during that. Uh, so, but other than that, the math is extremely accurate and is a very good good uh, means to uh, to actually estimate air mass, which is why 
um, why the why it's basically the primary means. Okay, so this is where things get a little more tricky. So the VE, the theoretical table. Um, so volumetric metric efficiency uh, is actually simply based on mathematical calculations. On, only that. At no time is it actually measuring the air. It's literally based on a mathematical calc. Um, so this is a lookup table that we're actually going to mess with. Tell the PCM and calibrate it that way, but it's still using a mathematical calculation. So that means that this can be off under different conditions. It can, it can be off a bit uh, because not everything is always accounted for. So as you see down here, you have a uh, humidity and pressure altitude. Um, which changes slightly. Um, it's not you might you may or may not see that, but but it's actually um, it's, it, it's a fact that that it can it can it can in fact change the uh, calculation some because it'll change the weight of the air um, or the mass of the air. So on the GMP is um, it's on the Gen three it's going to actually the table is in percent if you're using the two digits. Um, so it's a percent of total total possible efficiency and how much air it moves. This is actually the little more complicated um, formula to figure out, but it's actually not that difficult, and it is based on the uh, the ideal gas law, which we already discussed. Okay, let's uh, cover dynamic air real quick. So um, basically, it's a combination of both the air mass models, MAF and VE. Now, VE is also going to be used in quick transitions because uh, the MAF just isn't fast enough to to read uh, in some cases, depending on how fast that transition is. So it's going to reference the VE table. Now the, uh, there's also a bias in place uh, towards VE, towards idle, so the lower RPM is going to be biased towards VE, and above a certain RPM is going to be all math. Uh, so if you want to run math only, you're going to set this number down to like 1 or something, and uh, it'll always use the math. Um, but the VE is still active, um, it will be used in transitions, and also will uh, tell you, uh, they'll also throw a code if these two are f too far apart. Um, so you definitely want to still tune the VE, uh, or at least get it close. Now on the bottom we have the uh, dynamic air uh, from VE calculation. So you have dynamic air is uh, actually equal to uh, grams per cylinder times RPM divided by 15. And that gives us our uh, dynamic air number. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so now let's jump into the formulas. Um, so for cylinder air mass, it's actually fairly straightforward with the MAF. Uh, so let's talk about this one first because it's easy. Um, MAF is going to show up in grams per, uh, per second in your, uh, in your scanner. Um, to get to turn this into the cylinder air mass actual number, um, you're going to divide it by RPM and multiply that by 15. And so it so, so looks something like this. So you have the MAF in uh, 30.4 at the bottom and 1260 RPM. So we divide that and multiply and we get 0.362 grams per cylinder. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That's where that uh, calculation comes from. And uh, the easiest way to find it. There's there's some other ones out there, but uh, this is this is the easy way, easiest way to wrap your head around how that that happens. Okay, on to the more fun one here. Uh, so the VE again is a uh, mathematical calculation. We're gonna take a look uh, take a look at it right now. So first we need to find the moles. As uh, we already talked about, we don't know what this is, and that's actually what we want to know. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that. And um, you see, uh, re probably should recognize this. This is the uh, PV equals NRT formula. Uh, except for we've rearranged it, so um, P times V divided by R and T should give us the moles. So first we find this number, and then we're going to take the number, and we're going to multiply the molar mass, which is the 2897 constant, um, which is technically not a constant, because it's that's the if there's any humidity in there, it's going to change a little bit, which makes this slightly inaccurate. Uh, anyway, so we're going to multiply that by the VE percent, and of course uh, if you divide anything by 100, you're going to get it in percent. Uh, so you just uh, you can plug the re uh, regular old number right in here. Throw in a divide by 100 and it turns it into a, a percent. And then, of course, um, that's going to equal our uh, grams per cylinder. So let's take a look at an example real quick. We'll see what that looks like. So pressure is going to be 54.1 kPa. Um, volume will be 0.875. That's for a 7 liter engine. Our R is constant. Um, T is going to be 324 Kelvin. Uh, and, of course, molar mass is going to be 2897, as we know. Again, pretty much a constant. And um, VE table is going to be 44.18. Alright, so let's see uh, what that looks like. So we multiply these, divide by that, we're going to get 0 0.018. Um, too easy. So that's, uh, that's, that's what it's telling me as how many moles I have. So, But how much does that weigh? So, um, Or how much mass is that really? So we multiply by the mass. We're going to get 0 0.509. This would be at this pressure the most the engine could possibly move or possibly have in the cylinder. 
However, we know in reality this isn't the case, so that's what the BE table comes in, and we're telling it the percentage of this number. So let's see what that looks like. So we multiply 509 times the percent, and uh, we're going to get 0.245 grams a cylinder. Now remember, if our percentage is wrong, um, then this is going to be wrong, and um, that's why we adjust the VE in the first place to get this right. And that's the whole point. So, um, but now you can see how that number plays in to everything else and how the actual calculation works. It's uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. All right, so the first one was that with no temperature bias. So we're going to take a look at what it looks like with the temperature bias factored in. This will come from your cylinder charge temperature table uh, from your airflow tab. Um, so as you see, the temperature is going to be IAT added to ECT minus IAT times the bias. And uh, that'll give us a totally different number, as we'll see. All right, so um, normal, uh, everything's still the same. So everything on the side is exactly the same, except we have added ECT and the bias from the table. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and see what that looks like. All right, so we do this. Um, it's actually going to work out to uh, 0 0.169, 0 0.169, uh, which is significantly less than it was before, because now we have a bigger temperature. Um, when you work this out, it's going to be larger than it was before, and then 324. It's biasing towards the ECT sum. And we multiply that, and uh, we get 0 0.490, and we multiply 490, our molar mass, um, times uh, our VE, and we're going to get 0.216, which is uh, a lot less than what we had before. So you, need, you see heat has a massive effect on this. So um, that's uh, this is what's going to be in the regular tune. This is what it's going to look like. Um, if you have the IAT sensor located in the uh, manifold, then this is not necessary. All right, so I built this graph to show um, the change in pressure and change in grams per cylinder of the air mass um, over a car warming up uh, from, from basically a cold start. Uh, as you see here, the pressure actually starts out fairly high, uh, a little bit higher, um, which is uh, probably to be expected. Uh, however, you'll actually see that very quickly, even within just 20 degrees, um, it, uh, Fahrenheit, by the way, from the engine coolant, um, it actually uh, actually goes all the way down to 69, then starts to balance out. Um, you see 69, and it jumps back up to 71, and another, uh, and up to one, 155 here, and the IET is also getting warmer too, so it's climbing down the chart. So, this IET on the left. So as you see, uh, the pressure actually remains fairly consistent throughout. In fact, it actually starts to drop off, which is uh, kind of opposite of what you'd think. Um, so as it gets hotter, the pressure actually goes down. Now, as you see, uh, if you were to average this out, 67 and 71 and 69 here, and basically this is a, uh, you know, this is 70 degrees of difference here, um, the pressure actually doesn't change a whole lot. Um, not even one cell on the BE because you're right around four here and uh, two here. And uh, so if you see, it's actually not a huge change on the VE table, which goes by five. Um, so that's not even enough to change it. However, if you look at the heated air mass itself, you see uh, this is my table for grams per cylinder um, plotted along the same chart. Uh, so we have 0.277 starts out. And in fact, uh, over here it says 2.41, which is even crazy high, uh, but I'm not going to count this number into it. I'm just going to look at the average here as it drops off. So we see uh, 0.277 and it drops all the way down to uh, 0.205, which that is a significant change. That's a lot. Uh, if you think about that, that's actually three cells on your spark table from 0.28 to 0.2 is three cells. Let's change that just based on heat and uh, pressure did not change. So what that tells us is that the moles actually came down. The moles have been reduced because the heat has gone up and so my moles must be less because the pressure remained fairly consistent throughout especially from here to here um, the pressure is almost the same here to here um, when it comes to 5 kPa difference it's, that's not a lot and also this doesn't factor in RPM either uh, so that's also going to have a slight effect on this um, but other than that yeah it's a uh, it's definitely uh, definitely interesting to see uh, that that's actually what's going on all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what actually is happening here. So i um, got a picture of the engine, and, um, and we'll see the atmospheric pressure, intake, and manifold air, and intake pressure. Let's talk about this stuff real quick. So we have, 100, uh, let's say, 102 or 1 atmosphere um, KPA at 20 degrees. 
that's going to go down in our our, in, our intake here. Um, as, as it uh, comes in the intake, you get the it's going to get warmed up a little bit. So you get the cells, uh, 30 degrees Celsius now, about 10 degree difference. So this is uh, actually getting um, a little warmer. So as it goes back, it's going to hit the the throttle blade and stop. So let's imagine this is idle conditions, and um, now you're going to heat the air even more. So now it's at 90 degrees. So now let's push that into the engine at 90 degrees Celsius and uh, our map is going to read let's say 75 kPa. Um, so let's let's uh, take this into account. So now what's going on here is actually you're going to end up with less moles in the intake um, than in the atmosphere because of the heat. Because uh, this is not a trapped air mass. It's actually able to escape back out right here and uh, pull in what it needs. Um, and so basically what's going to happen is going to just reduce the density of the air in the intake itself all the way down to here until it gets trapped in the cylinders. That's the only place it gonna, that it can be trapped. It's where we're going to squeeze it and uh, squirt fuel and do all that good stuff and um, make horsepower. Uh, however, so here um, is the kind of the key to this. This is where the air becomes less dense because it's hotter. So we can escape back out into the atmosphere right here. And in addition to that, you have uh, heat all the way around. It's going to reduce the, uh, also reduce the density of the actual physical air available from the atmosphere. So as, uh, let's take a look at it, at this, and uh, we have a vacuum at 27 kPa based on the 75. And um, take a look at the PV and RT thing. So uh, let's take a look at P. So we know this is small to no change from the scanner. It was only four to five kPa tops. Um, we know the volume will not change and the R will not change. So what does change is the temperature, the big change, and the, the moles, which is also a big change. So now you can kind of see what's happening um, and uh, how that works back into the formula and actually what's happening and what we're seeing in the scanner and why. So now we know, uh, now we know that d less dense air, or hotter air is less dense and therefore will be uh, at maintain about the same pressure uh, however you're going to lose a lot of the air mass itself and hopefully that makes sense uh, but that should about wrap this up all right in conclusion we've covered a few things uh, so we've learned that the PCM has two basic methods in determining the airflow we have the MAF and we have the VE of course the MAF is the measured with the heated element as we learned and uh, VE is um, the theoretical lookup table in percent of possible molar mass at a given temp and pressure so we've learned a few things it's probably uh probably may have dawned on you that uh, heat has a massive effect on cylinder air mass more heat equals less air mass we went over that and proved it um so we also see that a uh, proper ve table relies on a stable environment to go ahead and mit mitigate as many possible outside factors as possible so you take out uh, all the adders and everything else that we can um, to make this happen so you try to tune it with the same temps and conditions if possible um, and uh, you should get a better looking ve table um, another thing to note that uh, this type of VE is only on Gen 3s. Uh, the Gen 4s use something called GMVE, and uh, that's a whole other animal, and we'll tackle that some other time. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. And uh, go ahead and uh, tell me what you think in the comments below, or hit me up on uh, LS1 Tech, uh, Chopper Doc. And um, I'll see you out there.